Hi, take rabbit here. So anyway, um, continuing the um, logic analyzer investigations, and um, I found out that there is a software tool that you can use to partially automate the usage of the analyzer. It's called um, DOS Utils. So the interesting question is, that can you still use them? And um, yeah, so. I actually succeeded in finding where they are, and um, the original platform is MS-DOS 3.3, uh, created around 1989, so relatively old software, 33 years. <laughs> uh, it's basically based on Turbo Pascal, so the source code is included, but it does have some typical to the time frame in question. It has some um, binary um, assembler extensions. So anyway, for this effort I thought I'd set up a few um, limitations and guidelines. So I actually don't have an access to a uh, MS-DOS um, environment. And then I'd like to actually use tools that are um, publicly available and free of cost. So, let's dive into it. So, anyway, the first thing we need to do is to um, download the DOS utilities. And I'll actually be putting the URL and other related information in the uh, comments of the video. So, so, you don't need to copy it from the screen now. But what we need to download is from this location here, which is basically image files. Uh, related disk image files related to the um, logic analyzer. Then we need to actually take this tar um, g set file, and this can actually be unpacked with, um, ah, for example, 7 zip. So it's uh, normal um, zip compression utilities won't recognize this file format, but if you take 7 zip uh, or other equivalent utilities, you can unpack it. So, first step is to download this and unpack it. Oh, let's download it, and I'll put it on a kind of empty USB stick just to make it more clear to see what's going on. So, take that one, I use 7-zip, so, and we extract it, and then we extract this one. And then we get the actual um, DOS utils. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to take a copy of it. And put it on the root here. So, and then we will rename this. And then we're going to actually take away all the MS-DOS specific and the old executable stuff and the extra library comp used. We just leave the um, pure DOS utilities um, source code, Pascal source code. Phase done. So now we need to go get one more package in source code format, and um, um, this is something called a Pascal implementation of a very good window package for Turbo Pascal. <laughs> so that's on 
this website. Let's see if we can find it. where we put the other package. So, we extract this package. So, we get this set of files. And from here we're going to take the source code and the object file and we put them there so now we have the main required source code and, um, and I was wondering what is this then? So um, this is actually the uh, binary files uh, or basically object files are compiled assembler code um, which has been created usually in the back in the day because it's uh, the only way to get it fast enough or the only way to um, create a, an implementation that doesn't take so much memory or you need to be able to access low, very low level APIs which are only accessible through um, assembler interfaces. Um, uh, so basically the drawback is that this uh, if you wanted to move out of the uh, i86 world it, it basically it's not portable because this requires um, uh, I86 assembler compatibility to be able to execute this this package. So if if you really wanted to make this portable, then you'd need to re-engineer the uh, content of the object file. It's not that impossible. You can probably reverse engineer the functionality that it implements. But in this case, we're going to use it as it is. So of course, the question is: since we now have um, dot um, pass files, Pascal, Turbo Pascal files <laughs> from 33 years ago, then uh, what do we do with those then? So obviously to be able to do something useful we need to compile them uh, and um, basically for that we can depend on this Turbo Pascal with DOSBox implementation. So um, the next, next thing to do is to download this package and install it. I won't go through the installation, it's a relatively easy thing to do. So anyway, if you start and you think that the, uh, the window itself is uh, aggravatingly too small, then you can actually change that in DOSBox config with this here, uh, Windows Resolution. And um, sabotage the file, so that's actually... If you do the default installation, then it's uh, available in that location. So that now that we started DOS, DOSBox and Turo Pascal, so the first thing to do is to mount the um, working drive. So let's just have a look at my hint sheet. File DOS shell. Mount. Have an A drive. USB Options. 
directories. And then so all these need to be set to A. So this is the like window management part, uh, TPW6, like a sub module. Now this is the actual program. See, we have an executable. Uh, the object file is still there. Then we have the TPU, which is the Pas Turbo Pascal unit module being has been created. And then we just try and run the program and see if anything happens. Um, so. Oh, look. The um, main menu. So so far so good. So before I continue, I just like to point out that at least based on my testing, that if you use DOSBox and you use a USB-based serial adapter, at least I have not been able to get it to work. Um, so that's a no-go. So we have to take an alternative path. So the way I moved forward was to use um, free DOS, which is a free implementation of, of the DOS environment. So what you can do is that you can actually create a, a bootable USB stick. That you can uh, follow the instructions on the site. Uh, and you can um, download a version of this, which is a bootable um, USB drive. You go through the process of download the package and write it to a USB drive. And then I copied onto that USB stick the DOSBox A directory that we do with the compiled files that we just um, created. And then I, um, I, I made a previous video about acquiring a um, retro PC. So, so what I did is I booted up my retro PC, you know, which has a physical serial port um, with free DOS. PC side to see a gender changer and then an old null modem adapter. So now we need to set up the communication side only. Which you can answer, so we take the 29 and this one to 2400. Now there's an interesting fact that this is the setting that the serial port on the PC gets when FreeDOS has booted. And um, the actual program that uses this device does not set any communication parameters. They should be set using the mode command. And just for your information, if you want the mode command for FreeDOS, it's not built in, it's not provided with the FreeDOS package. You need to download it separately, the mode command that works with FreeDOS. But anyway, I just use the defaults. 
asked what the serial port is initialized to when FreeDOS starts. When FreeDOS is booted, then we just take select. And then, since I don't want to install DOS, then we just say no. And then we get into the command line. And then we can see that um, we actually um, we have like the C drive, and then um, oh yeah, exactly. I copied the directory. I actually called it HB sixteen fifty. I was looking for DOSBox, but uh, called it this instead. Ergonomically, the most optimal position. So here we have the program. Over here, and then just to see that um, things are working, I have to actually look at my hit list. What was it? Was it the one I was supposed to draw? And it was this HP stuff. That's the H. Close the communication configuration on the analyzer. Let's see if that works. So, so. Okay, I forgot that one has to. You have to exit the communication win window or the um, I/O configuration. And then you need to um, hit the format button to get to the main display. So then it's in, then it's in the correct position to actually react correctly. So if we now take HP stuff, then you end up in the correct listing, which is actually the file. Well, now I can show this. Now. So now the system has commanded it to go to this file handling level. Start the program. Let's see if I can remember how this works. And then here we can activate. Let's take every second one. And then that's done. And then we can load it into the logic analyzer with load. And let's take a look at it. So if we look at the format now, then we have 
Or actually, we could go back to the system level. And then we see we have machine one test with one pod. Wait, press that again. And then we get to this time format specification. So then we see we have one line which is test. And then we have Okay, pl polarity, that's plus, and then we have like every second bit activated. So that's how you can actually use the um, DOS utils to, to set up configurations, and then it has the option that you can also like save it to a file into the disk station and retrieve them from here. Uh, that's as far as I understood how the DOS utils works. So anyway, that was a brief demonstration how to pull down a 33-year-old program, source code, get it compiled, and um, run it in an environment that's still accessible, and then uh, yeah, configure the logic analyzer. And uh, what this makes easier, I mean, the idea behind this is you could set up several configurations for several types of analysis scenarios, and then configuration-wise, and then you can have them saved on, on disk, and then you can just load the analyzer with different configurations. You don't have to sit there, you know, putting in a, every single configuration for every single variant of, you know, of measurement of what wants to do so. So, I uh, could recommend this to have in the toolbox. And, um, yeah, if you're interested in this type of hacking, and, and little roadways into the past then um, yeah consider subscribing see you in the next one